The addition of adjuvant PCV for high-risk low-grade glioma um, patients is now the new standard of care for this population. Um, we did, in that particular paper, look at one molecular factor. We looked at IDH mutations and the R132H mutation specifically for, for that paper, and it showed a very large benefit from that subpopulation. So patients with ID, that particular IDH mutation respond very well to RT plus PCV. So they give um, their kind of excellent responders to this particular type of therapy. So that led to the, the question is, do all subgroups of grade two gliomas respond in a similar manner? And that's what I'm presenting here um, at, at ASCO, and it's got kind of a continuation of that work. Not only did we look at IDH mutations, we looked at IDH1, Two. Um, we looked at ATRX and CIC and FUBP1 mutations as well as TERP promoter mutations. And all of these are known players in the field of low-grade gliomas. Um, work from the TCGA and other groups have really shown their value in kind of diagnosis as well as prognosis. What still remains to be determined is kind of the predictive status and that's what we're still looking at. Um, it is um, because this is a retrospective kind of study on a prospective trial. Tissue was not mandated on this trial to look at kind of the molecular markers. So hindsight's always 2020. I think when it comes to that, um, when these trials were initiated in 1998, tissue of course was not mandated at that time. But nowadays, you know, we do prospectively collect tissues, which has helped us do molecular studies. But we were able to receive about 50% of tissues from this study, and we're trying to increase that a little bit to look at the predictive status. So I will say that the predictive status is ongoing. But here we reported on the prognostic status. And so by kind of looking at IDH a little bit more further from that New England Journal paper, um, we found, a, you know, increased our numbers to about 75% of the patients had an IDH mutation on this particular population, and that we did confirm and validate that it's an independent prognostic factor. And it was significant upon progression-free survival and overall survivor, survival, and independent of all the other clinical, um, like, variables.